In this video, we talk about so-called smart beta investment strategies. So let's start. What is that smart beta business all about? Past decades of empirical finance research has highlighted that certain subsets of equity, fixed income and volatility assets have performed better than other subsets and hence better than the respective aggregate equity, fixed income and volatility index. So if that was a systematic pattern, then an investor could beat the passive aggregate index by going long the overperforming sub-index and shorting the underperforming sub-index. Typical examples for overperforming sub-indices are first value stocks. Value stocks trade at a low market value relative to their book value. There's research arguing that value stocks perform in the long run better than growth stocks, which are stocks that trade at higher prices relative to their fundamentals. The respective smart beta factor premium would be the value growth premium. Second, momentum stocks. There's research supporting the claim that past winners tend to outperform past losers. The respective smart beta factor premium would be the momentum premium. Third, illiquidity. Research has provided evidence that off-the-run treasuries earn on average higher returns than the more liquid counterparts, such as on-the-run treasuries. Hence going long, the less liquid assets, and shorting the liquid ones gives rise to the smart beta premium, which we call illiquidity premium. Fourth, credit. There exists research arguing that bonds with higher default risk tend to pay higher average returns. The respective smart beta premium is called the credit risk premium. Fifth, short volatility. There's empirical research showing that selling options and hatching these options in the spot market has on average earned a positive risk premium. The respective smart beta premium is the short volatility risk premium. And of course, there are several other examples which I can't talk about in that video. But note the following implication. Each asset can be interpreted as a bundle of specific risk factors. An asset manager who buys hundreds of illiquid bonds and shorts hundreds of liquid bonds does basically invest in only one bet on the illiquidity factor premium. A manager that overweights 1000 value stocks and underweights 1000 growth stocks is not running 1000 independent bets but one larger bet on the value factor premium. Let's turn to the question how to invest into such smart beta strategies. You need to take long and short positions in the respective underlyings. The resulting portfolio is a dynamic portfolio as it requires adjusting the portfolio weights frequently. These adjustments go beyond the classical rebalancing. A good example is the value growth premium. A growth stock might experience a continuous sequence of negative returns and suddenly be classified as a value stock. So instead of shorting that stock, one would have to go long that stock. Here notice, a trustworthy smart beta risk premium factor should fulfill the following four conditions. First, be justified by academic research. Second, exhibit a significant factor premium that is expected to persist in the future. Third, have a sufficiently long return history to quantify its bad times with subsequent maximum drawdowns. And fourth, be tradable via liquid exchange traded instruments. I end this video with a praise for economic theory. My reading of the literature is that you shouldn't buy blindly into such fancy sounding smart beta strategies. While there is data evidence for the success of smart beta strategies, one can find other time periods 
where a smart beta strategy looked ex post not that smart. If data is inconclusive, economic theory should guide you. So ask yourself, why should the counterparty of a smart beta strategy lose on average? Said differently, what are the bad times that the counterparty is not willing to go through? Because if a smart beta earns a risk premium, this coincides with an insurance premium that the counterparty is willing to pay to insure against the risk that is attached to the smart beta strategy. The theory of the CAPM model teaches us that an asset earns a higher expected return if it has a larger co-movement with the aggregate market. On the other hand, Assets with a negative beta pay out well when the market declines and are hence valuable to investors whose wealth is invested in the aggregate market. Such negative beta assets would trade at a higher price and earn on average negative excess returns. Such a line of reasoning is consistent with an equilibrium outcome. And if the assumptions of the equilibrium model hold in reality, then this could be a viable explanation for a pattern you find. Also note, more current theories are usually extensions of the CAPM model. Newer theories show that investors' bad times can be more than just a market-wide drawdown. It, put, it could be times of low liquidity, or times of high volatility. These are all times of high marginal utility for the average investor. And as the average investor prefers to hold liquid assets, illiquid assets trade at a lower price. Investors with a less than average preference for liquidity can earn this illiquidity premium by overweighting illiquid assets relative to the average investor. Such an investor provides liquidity and earns an illiquidity insurance premium that the average investor is willing to pay. Also, as in the CAPM, a factor premium is positive if the average investor doesn't like to hold that particular risk factor in his portfolio. On the other hand, a factor premium is negative if the average investor likes having that factor in his portfolio. So, despite the rational explanations for factor premiums, there's also a significant share of academic studies that argue that behavioral biases are the cause behind several factor premiums. For example, value firms are firms with low prices. So investors overestimated the probability that such firms go bankrupt. Hence, prices are too low and revert back over time. Got feedback? We would love to hear it. Please drop us a line. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.